the New York Times, the old gray lady, the paper of record. Note the inflection. For the last month plus, the media, the New York Times, the politicians on the left-hand side of the aisle have bludgeoned us with reports that Trump supporters beat a police officer, Brian Sisnick, over the head with a fire extinguisher, ending his life after he was placed on life support. A tragic story when anybody in the line of duty dies. We all believed it. And once again, we are paying the price from the fake news media because the New York Times originally reported the story based on anonymous sources that originally they attributed to law enforcement, which now appear to be sources close to law enforcement. And they are changing the story that Brian Sisnick, the officer in question, died of blunt trauma. Apparently, he died of an unrelated stroke afterwards. He had tweeted his brother that he had been maced or pepper sprayed at the event at the Capitol uh, riot. They were not even going to call it an insurrection anymore. This is just the media trying to frame an event and then using a horrific big lie. And I'm going to talk about the big lie momentarily, but this is a huge lie, a big lie that they are using. And they are then framing the story and attributing this to all Trump supporters when it didn't even happen. The New York Times has now corrected the old version of the story to say that it appears that the evidence isn't there. But why did they publish the story to begin with? These are planted stories by the left-wing operatives that are trying to play 4D chess to destroy our nation, to divide us against each other, to divide us against the police and vice versa. And the right-hand side of the aisle is once again being demonized by absolute fake news. Of course, they go out of the way to defend BLM and the rioters when they eviscerate local businesses and destroy people's livelihoods. That's perfectly okay. That's defensible because they're doing it in the name of racial justice. But when they report false news that never took place, we're supposed to continue to pay attention. So the question that I have for you is when is the New York Times just a trash rag magazine. This is the same paper that said intent doesn't matter when using a racist word, the N-word, which Don McNeil Jr., their longtime health and science reporter, was fired for saying. And then they come out and say that intent doesn't matter. I will remind them of this if any of their editors actually run somebody over accidentally that jumped out in front of them. Intent doesn't matter because you still injured the person or killed the person. Intent doesn't matter. BS. Everybody has had a friend that accidentally hit them with an elbow or something like that, as I have on the basketball court. And believe me, it makes a big difference if the person intentionally did it or if it was an accident battling for a loose ball. And everybody knows it. But according to the New York Times, they have a new standard that intent doesn't matter. So if I question, did somebody use the N-word like this, and I use that word, is that meant as a pejorative against somebody of color? No, of course not. But according to the New York Times now, intent doesn't matter. So now they're spreading this big, big lie about the Capitol insurrection, the Capitol riot, once again, I'm going to call it, that the police officer was hit over the head. Stop believing the New York Times. They are liars. They are partisan hacks. They are no longer the paper of record. The right-hand side of the aisle, I'm sure that they get stories wrong. But the New York Times, they're not as nearly partisan and hacked, and they have some standard of truth that the New York Times has apparently lost. The same paper that fired their op-ed editor, James Bennett, for having the nerve to publish an opinion piece by a sitting U.S. Republican senator, Tom Cotton, and all the pussies, and I mean the pussies at the time, Times, that said that they felt physically threatened because they had published this person. This is not a paper that you want to continue to read, to believe. Cancel your subscription. Know that what you're getting from the Times is a lie. Now, I want to discuss once again the big lie, because this is a phrase that is borrowed from the Nazis. You tell a lie loud enough, long enough, and eventually people believe it. The big lie. This is what they attributed to the Nazi propaganda. And so by doing that, by intentionally using this phrase, they are making a, an association 
with anything from the Trump side of the aisle and Nazism. When in fact, the left-hand side of the aisle are the fascists that are trying to beat people over the head and getting them to believe their woke nonsense. And if you dare deviate, then they literally beat you. They cancel you. They do whatever they can to make your life a living hell. This is not the same on the right-hand side of the aisle. There is asymmetric warfare going on here. And when they use the term, the big lie on a continual basis, which all the left-wing media is doing about anybody that dares to question the election, they are doing so in an effort to make that association that you're a Nazi and therefore the penalty, the repercussions for questioning anything to do with the election go up because of that association that they are intentionally creating. So once again, the New York Times retracts the statement that the Capitol policeman, Brian Sisnick, died of blunt trauma and being beaten over the head with a fire extinguisher. Nevertheless, this has been the story for the last month and the reason that many people have now demonized the right-hand side of the aisle. Fake effing news. These people can go F themselves because they are intentionally, and I mean it is intentional, they did not vet the sources, there was an article available in the local newspaper on January 8th, I believe it was, that Brian Sisnick died of a stroke. The New York Times did not do their due diligence, and this is what they're reporting. So drop your subscription to the Times. Stop believing their big lies. Let's put that on the Nazis at the Times, their big lies. And let's try to come back to a state of trying to communicate with one another and understand each other as individuals and know that we should be working towards a common goal of defending freedom and liberty and not what these wokists who have are a cult that want to destroy our freedoms and civil rights. And the New York Times plays right along with them because their hatred and their Trump derangement syndrome that they have. Lies, lies, lies. Intent matters. And I question the New York Times intent. They are bad people. Tell me how I'm wrong in the comments section. If you're new, subscribe to the channel, thumb it up. You get a little endorphin hit when you turn that little like button blue. I promise it feels good. Have a fantastic day. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Peace.